Hey YouTube, it's David, the Georgia Photographer, and today I want to do a simple little tutorial that I've kind of figured out over time about how to light a piece of equipment or product that you might want to take for maybe, maybe you're wanting to sell something online, maybe you just want a cool picture of your personal widget or item, whatever it may be, this is how I like to light them. And personally, I prefer to light things with like a black backdrop because it allows you to photograph them pretty much anywhere. By doing that, you you minimize the equipment you need. You don't need like a white, seamless background. You don't need all that extra stuff. So with that, let's get into this. And what I'm gonna shoot today is this watch. I'm a kind of a watch guy. Y'all seen me wear my watches. I like this watch just because of the fact that it's massive. This thing is enormous. It's a... Uh, it's rated for some kind of ridiculous amount of depth. I think it's 3,000 or 4,000 meters. Yeah, like 10 or 12,000 feet deep. Some kind of ridiculous depth rating. It's got the little helium pressure valve and all that jive. But it's a, it's a micro brand and it's a cool watch. So I'm gonna use it for my subject mainly because silver reflective devices are more difficult to photograph than say opaque ones like just painted colors or whatever so to get this watch to expose well without showing hot spots you know you have a little little line where the flash hits it that blows out or whatever to get that out of it it's a little more difficult so i figured i would use this because it's got a black face and silver everywhere else it would just make a good test subject you might say and i kind of like the watch so i'm probably going to put the photo on my instagram when i get done let's do this all right, first thing you're gonna need is a camera, of course. Well, I'm gonna use the D810. I got the 60 millimeter micro Nikkor on it. That'll allow me to focus really close and fill the frame with the subject, things like that. That's the camera and lens combination. All right, next thing you're gonna need is a light. I'm gonna use an SB700 speed light, not because I need it, but because I have it. This is, this is my preferred speed light for my Nikon. Any speed light will work. As long as it has sufficient flash output, you'll get the result you're wanting here. I'm gonna use this in manual mode. So it's not like it's real critical that it be a TTL. Now I am shooting in high speed sync because I'm shooting at one one thousandth of a second. I'm doing that to minimize camera shake. Since this is an unstabilized lens on an unstabilized camera, I'm shooting off a tripod and I'm shooting at a real high shutter speed to minimize camera shake so that the image will be sharp. You can shoot at 1 250th of a second and it'll give you good results. If you can't get high speed sync with your flash module, say you've got the, the older Young No, you know, the 560 Model 2 or whatever that doesn't do high speed sync, it'll work just fine. Just run it as fast as the camera will allow, typically 1 200th, 1 250th, and just be real still with the camera. Maybe shoot with the self timer or something like that. That way the camera shakes minimized. But I am gonna shoot this flash in manual mode. If I let the camera do the thinking, it's gonna bring up that background from black, which is what my goal is. And it's gonna add a bunch of flash power. If I use TTL flash on this thing, it's gonna super blast my image with, with light and it's, it's not gonna give me the result I want. I'm shooting a silver object, so I need it to be well diffused and not a lot of light. So because of that, what I'm gonna wind up doing here is shooting a manual and then take a few test shots and kind of walk it in. And, I, and what that means is I'm gonna have to adjust my f-stop to get the depth I'm wanting because I wanna run the, the largest aperture I can get away with because then that allows me to shoot the lowest flash energy. And by doing that, I won't get near as much spill light around my subject. I like to put to expose the camera for the background I want, which this time is gonna be black. And I'll just take test shots, turning down the aperture one stop at a time till I get a black frame. And then I'm gonna add the flash. And then I'll, I may shoot it a time or two with a naked flash, but I probably won't because I have a flash modifier I bought off of Amazon. What this is, is a little bitty. It'll actually fold up like a reflector. It's got a little bitty carry in case it fits in. All right. It's two reflectors sewed together. It's open in the center. It's got a piece of elastic that goes around the head of the flash. So the flash points straight up. The inside, this band on the inside is reflective. It's silver reflective. So the light goes up, hits that band, and it just scatters it. 
and uh, the back side of the back one is white no it's silver excuse me it's silver so it reflects all that light and then of course you have the white diffuser on the front and on the back you have this three color palette so that you can do a test shot and when you get into dark table you can find your whites your blacks and your neutral gray but the front is what I'm going to be working with today. This will give me nice, soft, diffuse light out of a speed light. We all know the closer you get to your subject, the more diffused the light becomes. Well, I'm going to have this right down there next to the camera. I'm going to be about a foot away, so this is going to be a huge light source. So it'll be nice and soft on the on the watch. I'll still have you'll still have a primary area of illumination just because this is right there. That's the goal with this thing. I am using the trusty sink cable. Yeah, a eight, ten dollar sink cable. Not very much. You buy them on Amazon, and this is for a Nikon. You get them for whatever brand camera you're using. I'm not even using flash triggers or fancy radios or any of that. We're just going to use a good old sink cable and get that illumination going. This allows me to move a good ways off of the camera with my light and still have absolute control. This gives me high speed sync. This gives me everything that the light would produce directly coupled to the camera, but off camera. 99% of your portrait shooting, you can use this and it works perfectly. No dead batteries in a sync cable when you least expect it. Your radios don't go bad. You don't get false triggers because someone keyed a ham radio two buildings down. It's controlled perfectly these are worth their weight in gold let's get this put together so you can see my setup one other thing i forgot to mention and that's that i'm going to use a piece of aluminum foil as a reflector this will give me a second light source to kind of bounce some light back on the other side of the watch and i'm using silver because it gives me you know almost perfect light reflection it doesn't eat any of the light hardly it just kicks it straight back so yeah it's just a piece of aluminum foil i got out of the house Yeah, I've already set it up and shot it once just to confirm things. So it's that's why the camera head's already reset. Black frame, just like I want. Turn the camera off. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in this piece of aluminum foil. I'm using my pocket knife as a weight so it don't fall over like you just saw. But I'm just gonna set it in the edge of the frame here. And I'm having to stand it up because I don't, if I lean it over too much, it kicks light down on the table and it creates these weird modeled effects in the background and my background ain't pure black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through the viewfinder and I'm gonna slide the aluminum foil up till it comes in the frame. And then I'm gonna back it right out of the edge. Then we're going to fire another shot. Now notice in this photo that several things did uh, kind of creep into the photo that I didn't really want. One of which is I do have some reflection off the table down here by the band. I also have the watch crown pulled out to stop the second hand because it kept running around in front of the logo and I wanted it out of the way of the logo. So you set the hour and minute hands at the 10 and two position, and then you wait for the second hand. Typically they try to land that second hand somewhere like either on top of one of those or top dead center, bottom dead center. They don't just try and stop it randomly like I did. But And there's a, a bunch of little specks around the perimeter. 
So what I've done is once I got done editing the photo, I took it into GIMP, created a layer, and I just painted everything black all around it and out to the sides and just hid all those specks. And then right up beside the band, I, I came in with a smaller brush and painted out that one hot, shiny spot on the table. And then I created another layer and cut out everything but the crown and literally scooted it over next to the watch. <laughs> so I photoshopped it <laughs> but this is the finished photo and as you can see it looks pretty good to be something thrown together with a speed light in 30 minutes time it wasn't bad at all it actually looks pretty good so you know if you spent some real time maybe if i'd have got some black construction paper and put down how much better would it have looked you see how easy it is to get those kind of backgrounds i mean you can do those moody portraits like that it gives you a lot of depth in your photo it makes your photo more interesting you might say that's how i kind of shoot my product photography and like i said i prefer to shoot i can shoot on a white background but i don't like to shoot environmental products because the the photo detracts from your focus of the product so you normally you normally see them shot on either white or black black is real dramatic and white works really well for websites maybe on another day i'll do the white background but this is david the georgia photographer and i appreciate you guys watching and if you've got any suggestions to make product photos with a single speed light better and simple you know that's not a complicated thing drop them in the comments let me know do you shoot professional product photography you know if you do Throw some nuggets of wisdom down there for the guys. Until next time, I appreciate you guys watching, and y'all take care. And get your camera out and go take some pictures with it, all right? Bye-bye.